Hello YouTube, Virtue here with another clip for you. Um, this clip is going to talk about um, the orphans of the Gettysburg Orphanage. Uh, these are the haunted ones, the, the entities. Um, and I want to do a second thing just at the end of this clip and I want to talk about some of the paranormal groups and I want to focus a little bit on talking about how they tend to go through these places and miss the fact that there are trapped spirits there that need some help. Um, but I'll do more of that later. For those of you who don't know my clips, I'll just quickly run through what I do. I'm a painter and you're looking at one of my paintings. I paint uh, many things. I'm actually an abstract expressionist painter. I do shows, um, etc. I also paint the dead. Most of my work is a mixture of both painting and spirituality. Spiritually wise, I, would, I refer to myself as a left-hand path practitioner. Kind of meaning I don't do dogma. Um, I do both black and white magic in most what most people know as. I mean, with me it's a bit more technical, but I'm happy with that. And I also work with the dead. Uh, I didn't used to work with the dead this much, but since moving to London from Australia, I sort of have to because London's so haunted. I have no choice. And to be honest, I've got quite used to it now, and I don't mind doing it, but I'm still sort of... I'm putting down boundaries with it. I'm still sort of um, developing, you know, where I'm going to start and stop. And I guess that's the second part of this clip. But let me talk about what I'm going to um, introduce today and how I'm going to talk about these paintings. I want to talk about the thing that I've found lately because what happens is if you move in, if you've got natural abilities to talk to the dead and you move into somewhere that is extremely haunted, what it will do, it's almost like it sort of opens the top of your head up because you've got all this energy at you. They know that you can hear them because dead people are like that. They know you can hear them. They start trying to talk to you. Um, and this is what... It's a funny thing because they talk to you and then your abilities get stronger and stronger and stronger because of it. This is certainly what's been happening to me and what's also been happening to me is I've been continually amazed at how the dead will actually get through to me. This is a particularly strange way that I found probably in the last 18 months that started to happen to me. Um, I've done a lot of paintings of entities after I've seen a lot of these paranormal investigation shows. Most of them is because I've seen them myself with my own eyes, recognise that what these people are dealing with is something really dangerous and that these ghost investigators are just oblivious to what they're dealing with. Um, I've had to I've had to do some some ritualistic magic to stop a lot of these these entities, and I do it for no money. I do it altruistically at the moment, um, because I'm concerned about the people that are either the living people that are inhabiting these spaces, even the dead people that that are caught up in these really bad hauntings. The hauntings I deal with are not. The pleasant ones. I don't get to go and do these lovely stage mediumship ones where everyone's sort of talking to their families and things. I get to do the really nasty ones. And most of them are extremely multi layered, especially in London, but even in other places where you've had a lot of horror um, and a lot of other things you can't explain. It's, it's just always such a surprise. I hear a lot of people sort of say that they've got this, you know, they know what the dead's like and this is how it works and they've got all these boxes that they put them in, but 
I find it completely the opposite. I find I never stop being totally surprised at what they do. And this is kind of one of them as well. Now, I have had this happen before. Now, how this all started with me and the reason that I did this Orphans of Gettysburg painting is because I watched an episode of something that came up um, on my YouTube. I was just letting it roll while I finished some artwork. And it came up. It was a thing called Ghost Lab. Now, I'd never seen that before. So I sort of let it roll and, and, and watched it. And they were actually investigating at that time the Jenny Wade house, which is another haunted property in Gettysburg. Um, so I sort of watched it and that was fine. That was all it was. But, you know, I went through my day and then, you know, I woke up the, the next day and I had a really powerful, uh, what I call a morning dream with me when anything wants to get a message through, be it, a haunted dead person, be it my own spiritual team that helped me. Um, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get synchronicities. I'll get all sorts of things. But sometimes, I'll get a very significant um, hypnopompic dream. And they do that in the mornings because I'm useless. I wake up two or three times of the night after a dream mess around and watch TV for half an hour and then go back to sleep and promptly forget the dream. So I think they're fed up with me forgetting them. So they give them to me in the morning, which is all very convenient. This was the dream I had after this watching this television show. So I dreamt that I was at the location in Gettysburg and I watched as um, I saw a whole bunch of children come out of this property and they came out but they were in this huddle and if you look at the painting you can see the huddle that's what they sort of look like they came out and they were all attached together and they were in this sort of circle but they were, they were all like the ones in the middle and on the outsides and, and they walked like this it, was, it just looked really, really weird because they walked in this huddle. They walked up to the back of this Ghost Lab trailer. Now, for those of you that have not seen Ghost Lab, Ghost Lab have a great big trailer. And in this trailer, uh, they've got all their technical equipment, their base, you know, where they sit in there and record everything. Um, they stood outside that trailer. They just stood there looking at me in the dream. Then I had another part of the dream, and I'm not going to do anything about this part of the dream because it's just too damn vague, but I'll put it out there uh, because it's obviously significant. Someone may know what it means. I have no idea. At the back of these children, I was then shown a brick pillar, like a, a built brick pillar. And on top of it, and this gets a bit weird, this is getting a bit out there, there's a there was a canteen tray and it had meals on it and then there were two on hovering over the top of it there were two dismembered hands that were cut off sort of you know a few inches past the wrist not gory it was like they were almost mannequin hands and they were just hovering over the top of this I have no idea what that meant so I woke up from the dream and later on I thought look I better research that dream I know it meant something I looked up the Gettysburg stuff. Now, I knew nothing about orphanage. I only knew about the Jenny Wade house. I've never been to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. I know nothing about it. My American history is crap. Um, but the first thing I came across within a very short time of doing some research was the orphans. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, that's them. That, that's, that's what they're doing it for, because what they're doing it is asking me for help. They're saying help. Um, I have had them do this through dreams. I have connected, and it's a really weird thing because it's almost like you connect. I didn't even connect to them because I knew nothing about the orphanage. But even just connecting to Gettysburg seems to be enough for them to be able to pick up on my energy. But one of the things that I have to say, for those of you who don't know, um, a lot of people like me, mediums like I am, it's quite easy for us to do remote. I mean, I can do remote viewing. 
really any time I want. I don't bother, but I could. Um, there is no geography on that side. There is no geography in the dead world. There is also no time. So it's, it's, it's a bit of a sort of wild ride, but it's quite easy to do. I know a lot of mediums that will do work, that they'll do it remotely as opposed to going on site. Um, I, I sort of, I like both. I like to go on site sometimes and other times I think, no, I'll just do it, I'll do it from home. But, um, so that wasn't a problem. It wasn't a problem that they contacted me through there, but it is just amazing how they, they, they get themselves to you, particularly if they need help. So, of course, this is why I did the painting, because can I really, once I researched and found out about this orphanage and what had happened to them, because they were uh, war uh, orphans, um, and they were put into this orphanage by the powers that be, and the powers that be hired a woman called Rosa Carmichael, who will have a look at it in a minute, because I've got uh, a painting of her as well, um, she tortured these kids, like she really tortured them. They were chained up, they were put in baths of water and left there for hours of just horrible stuff. Not all of these kids I know died at this orphanage. There were a few that did. But the problem with when you get trapped spirits, the, the issue with trapped spirits is a lot of these kids escaped that orphanage and went on to you know, lead, lead lives and died at all varying different ages but because this this incident in their lives was so horrific they come back to that era it's like they still get stuck even in their younger guys and can't move on i mean as i said it's really difficult with the dead world because it's so hard to apply rules because with this case definitely a lot of these children had got out of the orphanage had lives, but when they died, found that they couldn't move on because of this um, experience in their in their life. Um, and yet, you'll get other cases where people don't do that. It's it's it really is. It's just it's bizarre because it you can't you can't really control it. It is chaos, and I've learned that you just need to accept that. And just go with whatever the individual situation is. And I guess that's what it is. It's an individual reading for every single haunting you do. And this is certainly one. But, you know, of course, could I um, ignore the orphans? No. Anyway, let's move on. And this is... an image of Rosa Carmichael and this is a particularly ugly image because she's a particularly ugly woman and when you paint the dead I don't really get to say what the painting's going to be like because it's actually a form of channeling and if it's ugly it's ugly and this is horrific and I also should mention for those who have not seen my work before the circular things that you're seeing around the paintings are a binding now this is actually a ritual, but because my work very much muddies the water between painting and spirituality, I can either do a physical ritual where I have an altar. It's a fairly simple one with me because I don't have a lot of time. And it's, it's actually, um, it's almost like doing, I think it's probably influenced by a bit of voodoo, but it's sort of, I actually create a, a sort of, um, I guess you'd call it almost like a, a, a poppet or, or something to that extent of, of, of the haunting which actually and then bind it. So I can actually do that um, that ritual or I can paint it and you get the same result. Uh, it just depends. With me if you see with this one you'll see that there's a dark um, black it's a bit hard to see on this this image because it's not it's not um, too clear, but anything with a black, dark image is a restricted binding, which means whatever entity I have got in there is not going anywhere. The previous one it was white, 
and when you see the white ones it's a healing binding and I just separate because generally with bad hauntings if you can separate the like in this case the perpetrators from the actual victims it's going to calm down a hell of a lot because a lot of the time that just that energy is just still going of the pain and the, the, the hurt and the the horror or whatever has caused them to be stuck together but it's kind of I'm not shocked that the perpetrator is still with the victim because that that can be you know it's, it's I've seen it many times before anyway I think we've probably had enough of Rose oh let's move on because I want to have a talk about these ghost investigators so we'll go back to the other image I'm going to get on to the second part of this. We're going to go back and look at the sad but I think quite lovely painting of these these children. Um, I want to talk about this because I'm a little bit peeved about doing this. Uh, I've got a lot on my plate at the moment. I've got an exhibition I'm trying to get together and every time I try and get to the paintings I need to do, it's like something steps in. The reason I did this painting is because how am I supposed to turn down orphans? I can't. It's a strange way of the getting to me is to actually try and contact me through dreams. But obviously they're very desperate and that's the point. When I saw the amount of groups that had gone through, I got quite pissed off because I thought, look, I don't mind if they go through. If they think that they can get electronic evidence or photographs or whatever it is, more power to them. I've got nothing against it. But I think they need to be a little bit more responsible about what they're doing because I've done... In this series of paintings, in the series of paintings where I've just talked, done paintings of just hauntings that I've come across, I think out of 26 paintings it's up to at the moment, 14 of them are from what I've seen and through paranormal groups and had felt the need to intervene. I mean, I don't have to. But I've seen people that are in danger because I can tell what the entities are. And if I don't know what they are, I get spiritual. My spiritual team will tell me that's dangerous. We need to intervene with this. And I have 14 paintings of these things now that I've not done on site. I've not had any input into but I felt like I really needed to intervene because either A, people were in danger, living people, B, there were distressed, trapped spirits that needed to be relieved, or C, there were a pack of orphans. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. So, I just want to say that these groups, okay, go and collect your information. The information may be great. It may be rudimentary at the moment. It may not do much. But, you know, if you keep doing it, it may become something that's relevant. And they already may have relevant um, proof. I don't know. I, I wouldn't be that arrogant to say that they haven't because I actually don't know. And I know a lot of good investigators. Um, they do a lot of good research. And this stuff is really significant. And I think both groups of us, those of us that do the more natural version and those that do the more gadgetry versions, should be able to coexist ex together. There are quite a few paranormal groups that do take um, mediums and, and, and people that can do a more natural reading of the dead with them. And, you know, I think, I think they're a bit, they're, they're certainly in the forefront. Um, of, of, of this investigating thing but you know it's a really funny thing because I sat there and I, I, I am I, I'm going to ban myself I'm no longer looking at any of these these 
investigation, anything. I just turn them off. Because I just, I can't keep up. I've got enough to do. And I just honestly think that these groups need to take a bit of responsibility when they go through these places to either be able to do something to clear the haunting, um, particularly with bad hauntings, because I think the problem is if it was just a minor haunting, you know, one or two entities in a house, that's not a problem. Most people could clear that themselves uh, if they know how. It's, it's, it's not a huge issue. But when you get into the really nasty hauntings, and a lot of these groups are going into some of the nastiest hauntings, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm not scared of walking in to a really bad haunting. I've got a lot of incredibly powerful and high-level help that will, will pull, pull me out or protect me at any time. And this is the point. These people are going in. They've got absolutely no idea themselves, personally, what's around them. I mean, these orphans have had countless investigators, countless people, I have no doubt, staying overnight, trying to get some sort of contact. And here are these orphans these spirits coming to contact me come on guys come on you need to be taking a bit of responsibility for this because it's not about if the Gettysburg uh, Soldiers Museum which the orphanage has turned into you know they make quite a bit of money on that and I'm not trying to make an issue of that what I'm saying is that you have trapped souls there they're in pain and want to move on. You've got to remember that these are human beings. Just because they don't have a body doesn't mean that they don't have, you know, that, that human need to be at peace. Anyway, is my lecture. But what I have done is I have started to write myself a, or write a, um, a course, a short course, which will probably only go for about three or four hours. Um, and I'm going to put it on uh, Udemy. I've got that all organised as well. It'll probably take a while to get out, but it is a going to be um, aimed at people like paranormal investigators, and I'm going to advertise it through the round, the whole lot of them, because they need to be able to do something like this. This will give them the fundamentals of how you actually deal with it, how you recognise them, how you actually clear them. Um, and it should be a bit of fun. I don't know what I'll be like as a teacher. I might be a bit crap at it, but let's give it a go. Um, and I'll keep you posted about what happens with it. So I think that's about all I want to say in this clip. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. And I look forward to you joining me on another clip. And I guess that's probably about all I really want to say at the moment. So again, it's bye for now. See you later.